Oh, have you ever noticed why they give you bookmarks? Oh, well, bookmarks, besides marking the pages, they also can be used to uh, read the pages like this ruler. You can put them on the line, and then you can slow your eyes down, because if you're like me, your eyes start waving and stuff. Uh, I'm not going to use this ruler anymore on this story. So I'm going to place it right here, but I am going to use it as a bookmark. Well, kind of halfway. So I got another piece of paper, and it's going to help me with not hitting this mouse. Mouse. Okay. Now we're at, we're still in chapter one, and we're on story five. And it's called Ray of Sunshine. The Rays of the first rays of sunshine. And then, of course, nice, pretty illustration, probably done in oil. Uh, down at the bottom, it does have a caption. It says, what a beautiful world God made when he created the green fields of grass, the lovely pond, the grace, graceful trees, the pretty flowers, and everything that was pleasant to the eye. That's what the illustration, I mean the caption for this illustration says. Okay. Now we go to read part one, chapter five, the first rays of sunshine. Okay. In three short days, the dark covered globe was beginning to change into a paradise of beauty. Driven from the ocean. Yeah, driven up, driven, driven up from the ocean's depth by some mighty unseen force, land has appeared. Just a beautifully just a wonderfully and with a with equal suddenness the new continents and islands were covered with green grass and flowers shrubs trees and every shape and size and color now the fourth day has come evening and night had passed dawn is breaking from the bright cloud above the firmament, the atmosphere, a gentle light makes God's work of yesterday seem more beautiful than ever. But look, something has happened up there in the cloud. The breaking up, it's breaking up. See? Beyond it is a bright light, a ball of fire. What is it? It's the sun. All right. That first warm rays are sweeping over the lonely landscape, making it more and more like one gorgeous, uh, gorgeous fairy lamp. Flowers are turning eager, eagerly towards the shining orb as ferns lift their fronds and trees their branches in joyous welcome. That's the end of that page. Let's go to the next one. For this time, all the beauty of the world, the newly made, newly made world, is upon the full view of the inhabitants of heaven. It is the it is as though God has drawn back a curtain that they might see what he has done and enjoy his handiwork with him. And from far away across comes the sounds of wondrous music as the morning the morning stars sing together and all the sons of God 
shout for joy. Mm, interesting. Around the sun was a circle of blue getting larger and larger as the clouds dissolved away. It is the sky, the lovely blue sky, which reflects reflected on the lakes and the seas below, making them like making them the same color as itself. Yonder is the moon, pale and dull as yet, waiting for night to fall and the setting of the sun to make its place as light of the world. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years and let them be for lights and let them be for lights in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth and it was so this little part right here I watched a show uh, about a couple weeks ago and that's what what's his name did he turned back to Tom and uh, you'll uh, you'll see what what TV show that was but I'm not gonna say it right now because I'm not associated with them and it's not supposed to happen. Well, it there it was. It, let's just say it's not what we're doing. Okay, let me get back. Okay. Uh, and it was so. And God made the two great lights: the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser to rule the night. And He made the stars also. And we go to another. And, did it. and God set them in the firmament of heaven and gave light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness and God saw that it was good and it was good very good and very necessary for without the light and the warmth of the sun many of the plants and trees that God made could uh, could not have lasted very long. He knew that he knew this, and he and in his wisdom made provision to care for all. He knew too that the animals he was about to make would love the sunshine, and that they would never keep. Never keep healthy and strong without it. Man would love it too and need it to need it just as much. For and for his sake, most of all, those first rays are sh uh, shone upon the earth. In all this, God was talking, thinking not only of today and tomorrow but of many years to come the world he was making was not to just be a to, uh, not to be just a toy a plaything which he would toss around when he was tired he was building it from etern for eternity this is why he planned that the sun and the moon should mark the passing not only of days but of the season and years. Many seasons and many years. If a man he was not if the man he was about to make should choose to love and obey him he would enjoy the this glory land forever and ever and though man was not yet made I felt sure that there lurked within the heart of God the hope that 
all his years would be happy years, time without end, and the sun might never mark the day of sorrow, nor the moon a night of pain. And evening and morning for the fourth day. And that's the end of the fifth story. And this is the illustrations on it. Get the angels up here. Up here at the top. And then down at the bottom. You got what the land looks like. And that is story five of chapter one, um, part one. And now we go to part six.